Hello everyone, my name is Prabhu Swaminathan and uh, today I'm going to present you um, what CAD CAM K and overview through modeling. Now just want to let you uh, just want to recap CAD CAM K is a very busy activity in the field of manufacturing. Uh, the presentation is just an overview because I cannot go into great details. It is a fairly wide field. And there are several commercial software, but this presentation is from my own uh, built software, so I can walk through it. And it's not a commercial grade in any, in any case. In the end, I will display a model that was created by myself through going through these steps. <coughs> what you see there is a typical CAD process. We initiate the uh, model in a CAD system, computer aided design. It is a basically a sketch pad, replacing what uh, draftsmen used to do in early days, drawing on the paper. But now we are doing on the computer. Everybody knows that now. And um, that is the initial start. And then we, once the model is all built in the industry scale, it is transferred to what is called a neutral file. These models get very complex in the industrial uh, 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 activity. So they need to be uh, ported into different text format because the exact CAD data cannot be transferred in many instances, except for exceptional cases. So they go through what is called a neutral file. Next, after neutral file, it goes to, um, I'm sorry, Next, after a neutral file goes to what is called computer engineering analysis. In engineering analysis, they do what a numerical analysis of these parts that are subject to disturbances like forces, vibrations, or heat, so things like that. And what happens? This may not be the satisfactory in the first, uh, first cycle. If it is, well and good, but generally not. So they have to alter the model in some form. So they send it back to the CAD system, where the model is updated. It is saved back in a database. And so this iteration continues for a, until a satisfactory medium is reached, where the stresses, in the and, uh, available, the stresses are within the limits of the, according to the specification and the code, et cetera. Once the happy medium is reached, we are now ready to make the manufacturing product out, out of it. It goes, after this cycle, it goes to final stage. Here also there's a, something called data translation. It goes to the CAM tool, computer aided manufacturing tool. The data is again transferred into a format that a CAM machine can understand. Once it goes there, then we build the end product. The end product could be a model like that, simple model. It can be a part of an automobile. It can be a part of the shipbuilding part. And there are many more like that. So that is the typical flow process. Computer aided design, this is, as I said, this is made from computer graphics objects. What are computer graphic objects? They're mathematical definitions of um, various entities, like lines, points, and uh, uh, complex curves, surfaces, planes. All these put together, they are to these are tools with which they build the objects. So this is what computer-aided design is. OK, now I'll go. I was trying to say in the process, if this is also a we, we develop a graphic object's parts, merge the objects together to make a full model, and then check spatial arrangement. This is very important, spatial arrangement. This can cost a lot of money, because if the spatial arrangement is not very clear between the objects, if they butt against each other, in the end, they can pay a lot of money to rectify it. Example was my own example. 
I was working in a petrochemical industry, and once it was a Monday, when I come to, came to work, the previous Sunday, the people were working, they raised the center line of a pressure vessel that carried a pipe up, up, upwards. Now, if that pipe uh, was just two inches raised, but it hit the steel, and the pipe goes through the through entire, uh, entire, entire depth of the structure, it cannot be rectified if it is not caught in time. If it wants to be rectified, they're going to pay enormous money. So this type of spatial arrangement is one of the greatest benefit from CAD system. And then check for interferences. Well, it is industry uh, <laughs> part um, uh, complex structures are very complex. There are piping, there are uh, HVAC, there are pressure vessels, heat exchangers. They move uh, in expansion. When they move in expansion, but in the heat, they can go and hit something else in the structure, even destroy it. So these clearances have to be monitored. they checked and simulated. So this is another benefit of CAD system. And look, if you, if, you, if you open up the hood of the car, you see all the parts arranged in certain places. They are, that's because they have been studied they have been studied in some kind of arrangement, clearance has been maintained, and that's one of the benefits of the CAD system. A good CAD system does a lot, quite a bit. That's where the, in the commercial gate, pay, pay a lot of money. But I'm just uh, showing you those highlights. So introduction of the program. My program itself, I, I'm not going to run the program because it might crash here <laughs> while display happens. But these are the screenshots from my program. What I, ha I have here are the objects of this kind of crane model. So what happens is when I, these are the objects created by human. human. We have to have a human interface to start it. And after that, several things can be automated. So I start with the human interface, build these geometry of all these CAD objects and save them. This step, the next step here is going to Merge all these objects together. Merge this, all these objects together. Here we make, make sure that there are no interference, there are no butting parts. And then we also want to see if this model has been merged correctly. So we need a view of that model. This screen here is showing you that view. There is one view here in three dimensions. It's a wireframe. And this another view here in another plane. So we look at it in different views to make sure, yes, we are happy, things are in right places. This is another view. So there are a few views we always uh, look at, several views, actually. This is just a few shots. We also look at the shaded view. A shaded view gives a better perception of the objects mating together. So this is a shaded view in one, one plane. This is the shaded view, another three-dimensional view of the shaded object. So now, once I mentioned to you that there is a, something called neutral files. Once the object is uh, well-defined, you know all the parts are meeting together. Now it has to go to the next phase. It has to go through what is called a data transfer. This is the industrial standard. In the data transfer, we take the CAD model do a translation called neutral files. There are two, two special protocols. One is called IGES, Initial Graphic Ex Exchange Specification, was started in 1979, about so. And the other one is called STEP. STEP is an acronym for Standards for Exchange of Product Data Model. This is an evol evolving thing. It's still going on. Many have been constructed. Many are still being built in the specification. So these IGES and STEP, what they do is take the CAD data and transfer it into a text format with definition of each entity. Line will have an identification, circle have, will have an identification, and its coordinates, its parameters. So that's what that, this function, uh, this specification does. And what, once it is done, it will be supplied to other disciplines. There are several disciplines in an industry. 
they can be uh, computed in engineering analysis in the same dip the same uh, uh, company or it can be going out it can be going some other places uh, i don't know you can think of any of any other places and um, so that is that's one of the things they try uh, they do supply to the other disciplines other disciplines can look at it they do the material an analysis and take off and all that type of thing let's go for the next one so i talked about data transfer now computer aided engineering analysis this is the crux of the whole thing before the product is finalized there is a prefabrication stress analysis phase on the objects that are subject to disturbances disturbances are like forces vibration heat all those items and that stress analysis this k is a numerical procedure and is generally called it's called as finite element done finite element analysis okay or or some other cad models are mapped to a mathematical process for solutions this is the third phase of manufacturing now numerical analysis that goes with the last slide is a typically as we solve an equation of k u times f this is a, it, a this is a simple equation but takes a long time in computer to solve it because of the size of the model and then it has takes the appropriate boundary condition and gives the solutions and with the solution we try to do the next things uh, like uh, looking at it whether it is satisfactory or unsatisfactory done uh oh <laughs> okay let me rush through it one sec give you so these are the simulation part of that that also is important this uh, boom is moving and that uh, colors are updating the model next stress analysis prefabrication stress analysis and post fabrication stress analysis are addressed on a conceptual basis and there are several software but i will not go over them now the next case goes to cam which is the important part of this now the third when the solution is located between the cad cam the cad model is converted to cam format and then it is manufactured into parts and put together now what you see here is my own stuff came through cam i developed it at the extension school that is the first base structure and then went on adding more things i by, by strain gauges one second strain gauges and to, to, to make it complete my purpose was to take it to high school and introduce this as a cad cam um the k uh, course thank you Sorry. so much for your presentation <laughs> we're going to have a couple of quick questions and uh, as i said before i encourage you all of you to come down and check out the model uh, before you head off this evening so uh, please raise your hand and i'll come by with the microphone or ian will come by with the microphone The question person. <laughs> yes, uh, I'm going back to your um, your flow chart in the very beginning, sure. showing how the operations tied together. Can you tell me what points are there where people, where there can be a human interface, where people can come in and say we're at the we're in the um, I think it was the cam section, come in and say, well, yeah, perhaps there needs to be a correction for vibration. But my experience over in India said, with this particular instance, said that perhaps there's a little variation on that that needs to be incorporated. Do you know what I'm? Do you know what I mean? What, what, how many points are there in which there can be human interface with the process? How many points are there? For, yeah, yeah, but you know, ways that people can come in. Can they come in at any time and maybe readjust? Generally, generally, in initial stages are such that uh, they sit down together and uh, uh, form a committee and meeting and then go over this process. So that's the initial stages. At any time, one can come and say, there is no such thing as to the end. No, no, any time. Because this is a, a business which is, uh, can, uh, can cost a lot of money. So they encourage any time you come and see uh, any problem to uh, correct it. Yeah. Sure. Hi, so you have mentioned that there's certainly other programs out there that people are aware of. Is there any particular reason that you tried to do something different than yeah, the existing programs? Yeah, because I wanted to do something that I would like to simulate myself. I don't know yet. First of all, I don't have that much money to buy a software, so I developed my own. Softwares are very expensive. 3,000, 7,000, 10,000, goes on 20,000. For what I want to do, can be very soon. But I will develop my own. 
because I want to do a simulation, which doesn't exist. Plus, I want to integrate with some other uh, analysis work, which doesn't exist. Or it may exist, but we have to pay the money. But I will try to do it myself. Said so nothing is cheap in software. But Java is cheap, so I use Java for my, for my purposes. So that's the reason. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, we have to move on to the next presentation. But thank you so much. And if we can give them a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.